ATS, automatic train supervision. So this is your uh, central control. This is the eyes and ears of your entire system. The ATS sits in central control. This is where the operator is sitting in front of the workstation and they can see the entire system. They see the entire uh, line, all of the stations. Uh, they are, uh, they can see the all, all of the trains along the line and they see the routes and where the trains are and what they're doing so this is the eyes and ears of the entire system all trains all wayside equipment they're sending all the information to the ats and the operators in central control uh, the uh, they they are generally monitoring the system the system should be running automatically by itself but they have the ability to override these automatic controls for various functions of the system depending on what's going on um, and the ATS is also considered non-vital. So if the ATS requests a route that is not safe, the ATP system, again, is going to stop that ATS uh, uh, from doing anything further from that. The ATS has eight functions according to IEEE 1474.1. Uh, I've listed them out and I'll go through them, I'll go through them in a little more detail uh, now. So we have user interface, train tracking, routing, automatic train regulation, station stop, restricting train operations, passenger information and announcement systems, and fault reporting. So user, user interface, this is the human machine or HMI used by the operators. It's a, it's a GUI base of graphical user interface and all relevant information is displayed on, on the screen. And IEEE is saying you must have certain information on there for the operators, which is just an obvious statement, line overview, stations, trains, etc., cetera, uh, must be there to allow the operator to make the proper decisions uh, when operating the system. Train tracking identification. This is a non-vital train tracking. So when the train information is received uh, by the ATS, it is tracking the train. It's displaying the icon of the train so the operator can see where the train is. And it's identifying the train ID itself. So each train is unique with its own identifier and it's displayed on the HMI of the ATS uh, screen itself. Routing. Uh, the operators uh, have the ability to route trains based on the location reports of the train on the wayside. So if there's a train on the track, the operator can select the train, set the route to the next station, or advance the train forward. It has the ability to be able to route that train. Junction, and, junction management and prevention of deadlocks. So the ATS is the main subsystem that's uh, preventing uh, from the, the, the system from deadlocking. So what that means is when you get to a junction where there's a switch uh, or crossover, uh, the ATS has to ensure that the routes are selected in an order that prevents the system from deadlocking. You don't want two, two routes requesting the same switch at the same time and realize it's, it's locked or the switch is, is locked itself into position, but because there are two reservations coming from two different directions that the switch can't turn. So the ATS has to be aware of that. And that's called junction management. Uh, the ability to route which train first through the interlocking or not um, uh, to prevent these types of deadlocks. Manage the turnbacks. Turnbacks are a very important part of any system. That's what determines the headway and throughput of the system is at those turnbacks. So the ATS has to be able to manage it properly uh, to ensure that the trains are going on the right side of the platform when you want to launch that train. Keep the next train further away so it doesn't deadlock that, that switch. So deadlock turnback management is a is a very important part of the ATS and to manage it. Managing service disruptions. Every system is going to have disruption. You're always going to have a broken train. You're always going to have a passenger that needs attention, therefore that train is delayed. You're always going to have a switch that has lost detection and trains can't go through there. There's always a problem along the track that has to be managed. So the system has to be able to manage these disruptions. What that means is when the disruption occurs, the operators may take over manually to manage that system. But once the disruption has been removed, the ATS has to be able to bring that system back into equilibrium, meaning separate the trains properly uh, and maintain that headway. And this is an automatic feature of the ATS, so it has to be able to manage these service disruptions. And finally, the ability to route trains and storage lanes. Uh, I don't know why they mentioned that in IEEE, but um, yes, you have to be able to send the train to a storage lane, whether it be in the yard or on the track or on the main line in terms of a pocket track or a siding, uh, you have to be able to manage it through there. Automatic train regulation. Uh, the ATS manages all the trains, so it's basically it's a schedule. It's automatically routing those trains and has to regulate them, either using uh, schedule regulation or headway regulation. Schedule regulation is based on time. 
train, every train must be at a certain platform at a certain time, or it's headway, meaning the separation between the two trains that are there. And there are two, two uh, schemes that are used by the ATS, depending on what the operator actually desires. Station stop functions. This is basically saying that the operator has the ability to st stop trains, start trains, hold trains, hold trains at a station, skip stations, uh, etc. Uh, restricting train operations, meaning you may want to put down a temporary speed restriction, um, switch blocking, track blocking, creating work zones, <clears throat> all done by the ATS because it's a central operator. They have controlled the system. They're indicating uh, the rules, non-vitally, the rules for those uh, trains that are operating on, on the track itself. Passenger information and announcement system. <clears throat> um, this is your... Uh, these are your signs and <clears throat> auto, sorry, excuse me. <clears throat> These are your, your messages and signs that appear on the platform and the train in terms of audible or video or visual uh, messages. Uh, it's basically messages like the next train will be here in two minutes. The next station is uh, Vaughn Mills. Um, messages like that. It's an important element of any system because the passengers need to be kept in the loop. As a, as a designer, the passenger information announcement system was always a trivial thought because I was focused on the core functionality, train tracking, routing, speeding, uh, speed control and whatnot. But from the operator's perspective, the passenger information announcement system is one of the most important parts of the system because uh, an unhappy passenger is a problem for the operator. Uh, they're the ones that have to deal with the complaints of, of uh, lacking information or misinformation. So for the operator, this is a very important function and, and suppliers need to be very aware of that. And, and most suppliers are that actually work on, on this uh, function itself. And finally, fault reporting. Uh, any faults that are happening on the system, whether it be on the train or the wayside, must be reported to the ATS. So the central control operator is aware of the, uh, the, the problems that are occurring along the track itself.